So this format you have seen before you um, is the best way. It's kind of actually what I wanted to do the first time around, but I didn't necessarily know how to set it up. And I was really terrified of getting copywritten, and I still am, but I'm a bit more confident now, and um, I'm hoping my cuts and edits will keep me on YouTube's good side, because I really like this to be uh, just a fun thing. I'm not trying to steal anyone's money. I don't want that. I'm really not doing this for money. I just like anime, um, and this will kind of tell me whether I can do this again for future uh future projects like haiku because i'd like to do that one fucking volleyball or just anything i want to do we start this episode really with the usual update deku fucking in his best you know just a real quick update on how things are going and we all know how this turns out of course deku has no quirks we all know that don't mean shit deku does his best impression of all might I want to make a reference to this line right here. Even the setbacks in process in the process are real. I never actually seen a show refer to like even though this is an animated show, we we see a lot of admirable traits and a lot of like just basically humanity when it comes to a lot of these characters with extraordinary abilities. Um, Deku more than anyone. I mean, I know he doesn't have any powers, but We'll see later on that a lot of the humanity and just cost is really put on the table and you can really feel just like you, you feel you can understand like holy shit this is not something to play with but this is something I can do if I can show the grit you know um, I, I, Jesus I need more I need more good examples but this line here it just goes to show like there's a lot of work to be a he fucking hero and this season does a very amazing job of doing it. Best girl on the far right. You know, I know Mina is best do. But, you know, Oxcord girl. I forget her name. She's always got that fire on deck. All right. Back on track. The intro season, uh, I guess the first intro of season one. <sighs> Which one is better? The one at the beginning or the one at the end? Well, that's a tough one. I'm sure no one gives a shit about my opinion, but I'll say this. It has its place. It has its place because it personifies basically, well, it is it is of that. It's upbeat. It's a tra it's training music. It's training for the battle to come. Uh, the tone kind of sets it up for, this is obviously the tournament arc as, we're all, as we all know, but the one towards the end is sort of more in inward like more dramatic more just darker in the form of like okay these are all fun and games right now which is what this one is now we're getting into this is this is real life which is the downbeat or excuse me that drop of uh, all my coming in deku just in ready stance um that just shows like okay no the fucking kid gloves are off this shit is not a game anymore you need to fuck it. And where you're ready. Are you ready to take the mantle? Yes, I am. So first one, I want to say upbeat. Basically, this is this is kind of the kid stuff. This is fun. This is fun. We're all school. We're all learning together. That's good. Second half or basically second OST. Fucking real talk, real business time. It's time to get to work. Uh, the people would come across. Stain, first of all. We got to deal with Stain. We couldn't have this in like Stain coming in, just, you know, kind of doing his thing like, uh, like that wouldn't work with this music. Come on. So, yeah, it's just, they all have their place. And which one drops hotter? Eh, it, it, who's to say? This episode really started off well. And honestly, I'm glad to see Gran Torino, one of my favorite characters. No, not that Gran Torino. Which is honestly what I thought when I first saw him. Like, I immediately thought of Clint Eastwood. Like, get off my lawn. You know, fucking... God, he, that would be cool, though. Because he is kind of like Clint Eastwood-esque. But we start off the episode, All Might explains in his letter that... Um, he's like... A t it's, things are going fairly well as a teacher of the UA. But 
more or less how he met Deku and how he basically rekindled and kind of taught him, re-taught him what it truly means to be a hero, expediting, going straight into action, straight into the fray without a, a clause or notice. Like the movie Wonder Woman, the, the newest one pretty much portrays that well, is just showing why are we a hero? Not for, not for my own personal needs, not for everyone else, but it's because that's what we do. Um, it's cool to be a hero, but it's it's just heroes are cool because it's cool to be a hero. I think I said that right. Um, nah, but regardless, it's the job of the hero just to do it. It's not not for any intrinsic reward, which is why Stain is so cool later on and we learn basically he wants to cleanse just any of the the eccentric things that come with being a hero or the people who have forgotten because they have no place in a just society which is a little extreme but somewhat understandable um anyway uh going back to the letter uh all might basically explains that he doesn't regret giving it to deku and he took it willingly as most people probably would have turned it down because of the great risk that it holds so yeah this was a really strong start man and even though this episode didn't have a terrible lot going on this beginning was really just set the fucking tone for the first few episodes to come and the tournament arc honestly one thing i've only seen in this episode and this episode alone is who is that guy because we never he's actually really cool i like his design um, but I never see him, no one, we never see him again, like, who the hell is he? I kind of like him, like, his costume is, he, I don't even know what his fucking powers are, they went into late, later, you know how, like, they show the character, and their blood type, and their age, and their, what they like, I want a fucking bio for that guy, like, who the fuck is he? Like, he could have come in handy, with, like, he could have maybe stopped staying, no problem, you know? <laughs> Or anything. He could have been like the ex machida of uh, season two. We never, we'll never know. So in this particular meeting, everyone is discussing basically the events that happened with the Legion of Villains and how Shigagaki, uh, God, I'm, 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 you know what? I'm just gonna say Shigagaki. I'm sure I said that wrong. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, how oh, he's basically um, an unstable variable in that. He, him as a villain, he's actually honestly the villain without a plan. Like, he's not even the Joker. He's just a guy who wants to do bad, but I feel like he doesn't necessarily know how to do that correctly. He kind of just gives up at the first sign of trouble. And towards the end, which is, it's, it's a thing I haven't seen before. A villain that has a, a character arc. A really good character arc. It's kind of like, you know, the villain is the villain and they stay bad the whole time. They might have a means behind it, you know, kind of like Stain did. Like he was a past student. But Shiragaki, he's just, I mean, he, he was the um, one of the inheritants of, had to do with um, All for One. I can't remember at the exact moment. But he wants to do bad, but he's got no drive. I mean, it's like, it's bad he's a villain, but if you're going to be a villain, at least be good at it. Don't just kind of half-ass it, whole-ass it, you know? And by the end of season two, you see him develop into actually someone really intimidating, you know? So, I feel like, at the moment now, they're kind of saying, he's kind of a loose end along with other people that don't know what to do with their quirk. So, we kind of need to influence the community and turn the tide of which, basically... We need to make a rest and show that the heroes and police can work together to make a good image because we'll learn later that image is a big part of everything, not necessarily just heroes kicking ass. See, like Principal said right there, he's like our students, he still has somewhere to grow. He could still be good if he wanted to, but there's someone who taught him how to be evil, not necessarily... He, now, he didn't necessarily get it right, but someone taught him how to do wrong. Yeah, 
Okay, throughout this entire series, I've oh God, I spoke in, in the first time around, but I just want to reiterate, I love Deku is so just like uh, the way the way he picks up his routine. It's it's really good and it's really relatable to how kind of I do things. Just every waking moment that you have a minute like this in this i guess is kind of personal advice too i guess if i ever do a workout a video jack's blade maybe maybe like that i don't know i'm not as good as him but regardless um whenever you're not doing something if you have 20 minutes 15 minutes or you're just thinking in of, of yourself just fucking he's just thinking thinking talking you can take 10 minutes or whatever just to make a little bit of a workout for you but just the pondering it, it's a it's a really stupid specific detail and maybe it's because i'm a meathead and i like to see my characters lifting weights and shit but it's just the small detail of like this kid is fucking determined and even though he's still pondering about past events like that shit was real and it was fucking scary when the villains were out just toying with us like fucking a cat with a mouse it's he's still like i gotta get ready for the next one because if i'm not ready for this shit it could go worse i could have died that time i could die the next time you know so i gotta be fucking ready fucking all the time just ready for anything that's why deku is great i guess that kind of adds on to my very first video mom i'm working out <laughs> Even with a broken hand, he's still working out. That looks heat. Okay, so I want to adjust one thing. I want to... Okay, yeah, I want to adjust one thing. Uh, Mineta and... I forgot her name. I really did. And for some reason, she's best... Uh, someone's best girl. I guess? I mean... Can't see what she looks like. She. It, it's like Kevin Bacon in that one movie can't think of it right now or oh, hollow man yeah there we go <laughs> she needs like a hat and some shit but kevin bacon was weird he had those fucking blood vessels and shit anyway fucking hollow man aside how the hell did she pass the uh fucking exam we didn't even i would have loved to see how the side characters pass and maybe that's in the the manga and i need to finish reading through that uh on the side and maybe that addresses it but still I would have loved to see, like, the strength test, the ball throw, just the speed. They did a sprint. So there's no way to say, like, I guess there's necessarily no way to say that she didn't do it. So she could have just took all our clothes off and cheated, I guess. Because there's no way to prove it. So, I don't know. That's kind of the, the white elephant in the room. Yeah more 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 questionable things like that i never said this was gonna be a kind review i love my hero academia but there's some there's some shit that doesn't make sense uh, a good amount actually okay another thing can she turn her invisibility off or is that just always oh, because if she was born like that how to if she was born like that how did her parents know she had a baby besides like the did she, was she born visible opaque and then started turning invisible like susan storm or can, it'd be it make more sense if she could turn it on and off but she's like always fucking invisible so like putting on clothes and like just the really the being born thing is a weird the yeah why can't she the fact that she can't turn that off is like mind numbing like how the hell does she do a lot of things like there's plenty of questions to be asked but i'll keep moving on see even he said it it's like how do you stand out even oxcord girl is like come on i got better powers than that captain falco yeah, there's Bestie. 
alien waifu for life. So like a fucking OG, a racer head is already back teaching the class. For someone who sleeps in class all the time, he actually cares a lot about the kids. So I guess he wants his severance pay really bad. But that must be a fat ass severance pay though. <laughs> to be back after that shit. That's fucking ridiculous. Oh my god. So while everyone's basically discussing about past events, Racerhead comes in and basically explains, okay, we have our next kind of big school project, and it's essentially you guys are gonna fucking duke it out and basically just earn an internship. So essentially, you're gonna have to, it's just, you're gonna sell yourself to get a job, which is really comparable to real life. Um, shit, I'm doing that right now with school, trying to, you're an undergraduate and know how that is you have to basically collect your transcript you have to basically advertise yourself the best way possible um but in this world it's about showing off your powers how you use them how creatively you use them um and so basically to get the attention of a pro hero or professor in the real world but pro hero and basically this one and basically advertise shit that strands on to you might go to the military uh, the armed forces you might go to uh an, an internship and actually any job that really works so that kind of just basic that's another basically humanity <laughs> that's another show of humanity from this series man it's it's really it's this, the little attention to the detail is really what make the show the best at what it does. The the it's it's at the top of the charts for a reason and deep the devil is in the details. Yeah, basically we stating like what I just said. You have to advertise yourself, you gotta put yourself out there, man, to make it. You gotta go out there and be somebody. You end up being a sidekick. In other words, you are trash. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You better lose yourself. <laughs> I think she's gonna say that. Yeah, man. He's like, it's that time of the month already, you know? Also, Yuraka. Uh, basically, God, it's really simple, though, her motives. Uh, not the, just the how, the what. Just why, why do I want to be a hero? I want to fucking make money for my family. Fucking just basically simple. That's fuck. That's what a lot of people want. You want to go out and get a good job. You want to get a good education to get a good job to get the finer things in life. Fucking the 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 Freudian the the needs of basically how to live. You gotta go out there and make something of yourself and not selfish. That's just like I want money. That's not selfish. That's just the way the world works. And she shouldn't feel bad about that at all. Um, yeah, man. This. All the characters are realistic. They got realistic motives and realistic emotions. None of them kind of hold back with a lot of things. Certain aspects, but they're usually fixed within a, a short period of time. Also, Deku's tie is too short. Aw, she's so precious. Just buy me a trip to Hawaii, my daughter. The feel goods. Hit me so hard! Ah! I want to make life easy on my parents. What more could you give? You want to eat? You want guns to eat? <laughs> People are starting to figure out Deku and All Might's relationship. Although, not exactly what it is. I'm sure they make a pill for that. All a part of learning how to control that power. With great power comes great... I don't know, something like that, I don't know. Again, don't be me! Be better than me! That is the point of the training. Don't be me. I suck, I'm shitty, be better than me. And that's what you're gonna do at this fucking tournament! This festival, we about to fucking do work. Midoriya. 
Tell the world that I'm here! Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the end sequence. Uh, really strong, but it's just, it's just fan service. I never said fan, I'm not gonna say fan service is bad. Cause fan service is good, but yeah, waifus are us. Not, not, a, not a bad thing. Also, they're like 15, so anyone kind of going nuts with the whole Sue Rampage because no fucking Chris Hansen looking in from what's going on <laughs> it's like what are you doing here you know these girls are 15 so even I'll say like Mina and it's like is she a girl you know is she like a bug or something you know it's just you can't even see her so who's gonna know right you know who are you gonna get away no just just, just chill out they're like 15 seriously it's, it's not cool Episode 15 is the beginning of pretty much the sports festival. People getting prepared and ready for it. Um, yeah, beginning of the tournament arc. God, it's just, there's no other way to say it. Hype. Fucking big letters. Hype. Shonen does a tournament arc. It does a fucking tournament arc. Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball. Nah. My Hero Aka. Those guys are good, but... Mm, it, it's hard to beat this one. So at the end of 14, we see All Might explaining to Deku... Again, you're not going to be me. You're going to be the symbol of peace that will... Like, basically, you're going to jump off of me. You're, I'm your stepping stone. Be better than me. You're going to show the fin and fucking turn it. Dun, 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 dun. God, a fucking... Anytime that shit you say run kicks it. Oh, my God. I can't fucking... Oh, I get fucking... I get the chills, man. Fucking that shit is too fucking good. Too good. So, in other words... It's time to train. It's time to get to work. That's the March Madness of superheroes. That who doing his best. God, this is... I think too much. He's exactly how I felt when I was making this project. Should I do this this way? Should I not do it? But then again, I've done it before. Am I going to do it right? Am I going to fucking just... Fucking spew shit out of my mouth? Am I just going to just bomb the shit is gonna who's gonna watch this no one i don't this is fucking over this is over just don't think so much even though it's good think but sometimes you got to act uh what was that proverb i've heard he who is what is it he oh yeah he who is secure is not safe too much prep can do it can be counterproductive, you know? But, yeah, it, it's just, that's just, makes Deku good. He's just fucking, always thinking about, it. it's just, always thinking, always thinking, hmm. Should I or should I not eat All Might sandwich in the fridge? <laughs> oh, that is not sad. Like, this is totally up to you whether you want to do this, but also remember, why you, you sh you, it's normal to be afraid and that's okay but also remember the work you put in on that goddamn beach like freaking sylvester stallone and carl weathers fucking booking it and just remember what you did on that beach man and that's all you need all you need forget everything else ah extras he's like boy Funnily enough this guy um God, what was in what I remember his power though. He has like it, the moment you say something to him, he can fucking mind control you, which is actually a really strong power. Um, but he's in that same boat as Deku of like, I can really only use my power for certain things. I gotta rely more on my physical wit, you know. So that first fight between them is an interesting one. It, I mean, I know the Todoroki fight is good, but this one, surprisingly, don't underestimate how this fight went. Like, it was actually really good. And freaking Kachan, 
Fucking just fuck y'all doing. I don't give a shit about y'all. There's no point. You just might as well just fucking sit down. Cause I'm about to take this shit. No problem. And everyone's like, "The fuck's wrong with you, man? Come on, be nice about it." And then he's like, "Fuck you. I'm a dickhead. That's what I do. Fucking thug life." Now, as much of a dickhead Kachan Bakajo is, whatever the fuck you want to call him, I will say this, despite him being so abrasive, he is right. He's right in the sense of, it doesn't matter how much you rise to the top, it only matters if you win. So, you can essentially beat everybody, but if you don't win, then it doesn't mean shit. So, it's blunt, but it also is true, and I can respect him for that. But god damn it, he's gotta learn to be a better people person, man. He is he sucks at that, man. Deku is the best parts of Bakajo and himself. He has the kindness and the drive to prepare and win, but he also is polite and kind. Which is what makes a perfect hero. You need both. <laughs> Everyone's training! Training montage! Ah! Get the weight up! Get your weight up! So I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Does he ever run out of tape? And if so, how does he refill it? Is it organic tape? What makes it stick? How far can he shoot it? How much can he shoot at once? Does it hurt him when he shoots too much? I, it's just a lot of questions, man. Tape? What kind of tape is it? Is it duct tape? Is it masking tape? Is it painter's tape? Uh, you know, uh, just a lot of, a lot of questions. You know, with that particular power, it's a, it's a, it's a strange power. I have you in every spot? There, there are some strange powers everywhere. That one there, that's a, that's a really, just, how the fuck does that work? It, it really does that, like, how the fuck does that work? Is it ever shoot it by accident? How does he shoot it from his elbows? What makes it, is it like a fucking, does he have to flex, you know? I don't know, I could go on all night with this. I remember that first video, I was like freaking... At least 20 pounds heavier? Yeah, man, I'm like down to at least 235 now. I gotta get down to 225. I'm trying to get down there at least. See how, see how lean and mean I can get, but... Gotta get that cardio! Gotta get the cardio! Swimming is also really good cardio, by the way. If I could become Jack's Blade for a minute, I'm just gonna say... Swimming is actually very good cardiovascular work, um, and actually puts a lot more work into you, so you can do a lot of work in a short period of time. It also puts a lot less stress on your bones, uh, pounding, doing sprints. It's really bad on your knees after a while, so swimming, honestly, if you were thinking of a good way to do cardiovascular work, it's a really good one, I consider. Or bike riding, but, uh, God, what was the name of that? Yosh something pedal, I can't remember. Guy with glasses. Uh, loves, uh, he's a weeb and he becomes a professional, uh, or excuse me, he becomes like a freaking Lance Armstrong. I can't think of the name, but I'll put a picture there. I'm pretty sure that'll, everyone like, oh, you mean that show? And I'm like, yeah, I can't explain shit right. Damn, how much is he putting up? One, two, three, that's 45. Oh, shit, dude, he's putting up 405. Oh, shit, all right. Well, it's, it's easy to put on 405. I can, I'm good with like 325 a few times. Shit. It's easy to do 405 when you got goddamn six arms. How'd you get your muscles? Fapping. Fapping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that right? Well, Deku should say, well, I'm gonna treat you like my meat, and I'm gonna beat you. How about that? No, I'm speaking realistically. 
They're aiming for the top. There's a difference between aiming for the top and wanting to win. And I'm gonna win. Oh. Are you ready? We're gonna get a pair of red boots. I wonder if those are Tim's that Deku's sporting all the time. So from what I know, these other classes get flushed out in the manga, which is a good thing, because I'm interested to know more about the support classes. And if they actually have powers that are applicable or really useful. In other words, Bayonetta. Kind of Bayonetta. Like, everyone's sporting that fresh-ass gear, though. I want that tracksuit. I want that. I want those track pants and that shirt. All those boots aren't that bad, though. I like those. Everyone's got good, like, good gear. Like, shit, are, is, are, is UA sponsored by, like, Under Armour, you know? Or do they have like an endorsement deal with Nike or Adidas to get those tracksuits? I don't know, man. That's interesting. Like, I always thought about that. Like, all those. Do the UA have like sports? I'm sure, yeah. Because they have fashion sponsorships later on, you see. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Boy! Like, Adidas, like, boy! You get your mouth! Yeah, you look like a mouth! No! Boy. <laughs> Boy. He's like, at this point, we're, I'm basically used to it. <laughs> that's the, I, that's one of the most interesting faces I've ever seen Deku make. Like, forget the, the the memeable ones. Like, this one is like, really, nigga. Like, really, like, you you, you we we are we don't we don't speak for he speaks for himself. He doesn't speak for all of us. Like, he's just an asshole. I'm sorry. Yeah, so getting us caught up, that's his specialty. He is like, boy, toilet brush head ass, porcupine head ass, dude. <laughs> oh my god, he's like, I'm about to get on your ass if you don't chill out. Oh, shit. Can we talk about how good the music is in every particular situation, by the way? I'm sure we already know that, I'm just saying. When I first saw this episode a few months ago, I had no idea, and I was thinking on this for a while. I didn't know why the hell these guys were carrying him. I thought they were just working for him, or he had him under their thumb for whatever reason. It's looking back on it now. It's really, it's really cool actually. It's fucking mind control, cause I really, I honestly didn't understand why they were carrying him. Um, yeah, I just want to point that out. God, I feel really stupid that I didn't figure that out the first time around. Todoroki, you did kind of cheat though. Steve Mineta's fucking doing it. Shit! You got wrecked. <laughs> oh my god! Did he just fucking. <laughs> Did he just hit the death? Fuck you, Dad! I don't need your fucking powers. I'm gonna do this shit with my eyes. So, did Todoroki dye his hair that way, or is it naturally like white and red? And if for any reason, if it is, do the curtains match the drapes? Or excuse me, do the drapes match the curtains? Like, does he have, does he have like fire and ice crotch too? Fucking everywhere. If he has back, <laughs> like. <laughs> It's, it's really weird. I never thought of that. It's like, did he dye his hair that way? Or is that naturally how it grows? Red and white. And then it's, it's fucking happy trend. Half of it is red. Half of it is white. 
<laughs> oh, stupid. I'm an idiot. It's like, Mom, chill. I got this. See, look at that big shit eating grin on his face. You know what the fuck is up. It's like, I got this. Where did... I gotta find out what brand of shoes those are. What boots those are, man. I gotta give me a pair. I want a fucking pair of red boots, man. If those are boots. I think those are some fucking... Are those... I don't know. Are those some high tops? I don't know. I, I can't... Shit, that's like... The shoes you get at the gas station or something. I don't know. They look like some Air Jordans they could be. They don't even look like boots. What kind of shoes are those? I don't know. Well, I need comments in the, in the YouTube section like, what, what, is, what is, what's Deku rocking on his feet, man? What, what's your theory for what shoes those are? That, that, like, that's the big arc of season two. What the fuck is, what, what shoe deal does Deku have? And so... I need to get one. <laughs> Who's that guy? Who's he? He got the power of Pennywise the Clown. Aha! 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 Okay, that's one thing with the sporting event or this festival. I never really kind of thought about. Uh, what's UA's uh, insurance policy? Life insurance policy? Do heroes get life insurance? Do heroes need life insurance? I want to say yeah. Because like, at least at the school where they're working or where they're going to, because what if something happens? I mean, the military has that for like training accidents, so I would assume that heroes do. Because if someone like dies while they're training at the school, I would say that would come back for them legally. So yeah, a lot more questions of that come up. Of has you actually killed a student from like training exercises? I'd like to hear about that or any kind of past instances, but I think the show is a little too, maybe a little too lighthearted to kind of talk about that. That would be interesting, though. Something I really did enjoy from the season, they kind of did it for everyone, is an explanation of their power and just their name, because it's really easy to lose track of everyone. Another show of Baka Joe's Brilliance. Now, I'm still not going to take back my claim about Bakugo being a fucking asshole, but again, if he were just a nicer person with the same kind of brilliance, he'd be just, I mean, he really would be better off. Um, but then again, the show would be a lot more boring if he were nice like Deku. He's a dick, but he's a clever dick. There's a Star Fox reference here somewhere. Also, is that a motherfucking JoJo? Because... Okay, he's, the, I know, I've been watching this whole season, and I'm just, all I can see is, is fucking, is that a bird stand? I can't, I haven't seen all of JoJo, but, like, really, it's, it's really, it's Dark Shadow, it's really just a stand. Like, it's really just a stand, like, I'm, there's a bird stand in JoJo that I know of, I don't know what it's called, but, called dark shadow but it's it's really a fucking stand you might as well be doing poses and shit nice that's some incredibles type shit using the fucking robots abilities against them jesus fucking christ are they trying to kill these kids i think they're trying to kill them holy shit jesus matilda's got fucking I was gonna say, I thought the lady from Matilda was fucking mean. UA's just got a fucking death sentence out for these guys. Okay, we later find out that her power has something to do with accuracy. Now, I'm not... See, this, the, the rules of this uh, festival are a little strange because it, it's, it's implied that the support classes don't have powers. So they're able to use equipment, which he just explains, but they're not able, it, it, anything goes besides they're not able to wear uniforms.
but they later find out that she has powers and that's it's, it's kind of like a it's a small thing but she she, she kind of just says you guys undergo training f combat training so it gives us the ability to use equipment and costumes doesn't really explain all right well you have a quirk so how come you get to use the suit it's just because you don't have combat training doesn't mean you can fucking use all this extra gear but she can just go ahead and go all Tony Stark on these guys. Yeah, that's completely fair. About to have a fucking brain blast moment. Let's do this shit. Oh my god, fucking missing! I'm coming for that ass! No one can really do too much because they don't want to set the landmines off. The jumpers can also jump either. So, while everyone's taking their time, of course, I'm gonna come up with a brilliant idea. Why not use my disadvantage to my greatest, oh, or excuse me, turn the negative into a positive. Again, only, only someone who has nothing, just, no one else is ever gonna think of anything like that. I, I can't, honestly can't think of another character or situation where anyone else could come up with a better idea besides this one. Like, again, attention to detail. Little things like that. It's like, you're, it's like Deadpool, if you remember that movie. The, the greatest flaw of that film was Deadpool didn't have any bullets in that first action scene on the highway, but after you the guys, he didn't pick up the guns. It's like, why did you pick up the guns, Deadpool? Why did you pick up the guns, Wade? EXPLOSION! But I just did. And at that moment, Bakujo knew. He fucked up. Ah, Smell my ass! He said, smell my ass. How's my back look? How's my back look? Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Really, like, that's my boy. Your greatest weakness is also your greatest strength. Absolutely nothing. Oh my god, they just use them for free staff. That's kind of fucked. They don't even participate. You beat the man with super speed. That's fucking outstanding. No, it wasn't luck, it was skill. Skill and planning. You had the brains. Brains beats... Oh, brains always wins. What does it take to be number one? Two is not a winner and three nobody remembers. What does it take to be number one? That was the first three episodes of My Hero Academia Season 2. Um, I'm enjoying watching it, re-watching it again and finding the little details. But as we... No, it really sets the tone well for what's to come, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just, really, it's it's just enjoyable watching through this again, because I'm kind of reliving the nostalgia of just, kind of, what, oh my god, dude, it really just sets the tone, I can't, I can't just say anything else, it's just good, I mean, it's just good, really, I, I, there's not, not, but at the end of the day, it's just good, you can't really say anything else, so. Um, I think I'm gonna do this three episodes at a time. I think that's gonna be the best way to get this done. Um, hopefully the power of editing has chopped this down to a fairly portionable size. I really hope so. So I'll see you guys next time in the next few episodes of My, My Hero Academia. Go ahead, I'll talk some more stuff on some shit that I really don't know about. I'm just a guy that knows anime. So, appreciate you guys being here. Peace.